Good morning, everyone. At least it's morning here while I'm shooting this video. Let me turn some lights up here. You might be able to see better. Um, I had someone ask me, how do you make several little things for a project and keep it color coordinated, yet they're, yet they're different uh, pieces? And so I thought a good way to demonstrate that might be with... Uh, making some tiny little landscapes. And let's say these are four by fours. And let's say you wanna put four of these in a wall hanging or on a pillow top, something like that, or even in uh, your junk journals or your slow stitch books, however you wanna do it, but you wanted the pieces to coordinate. And basically you can coordinate by f theme, uh, for instance, if you wanted a winter scene or a wooded scene or a flower garden or a shabby chic look, whatever you wanted, you could coordinate by theme. You can coordinate by color, of course, everything being in the same color palette or complementary color palettes. Or you can complement by incorporating some of the same elements in each. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm going to demonstrate today, how... I use scraps to create landscapes, and I can coordinate these four by repeating some of the same elements throughout. And while they will be entirely different, they will in fact coordinate well if you wanted to use them in a, in a project. So let me grab some of my scraps here and see what we might do with them. Uh, I was going to have this all out and ready and of course you know I'm never totally prepared for nothing so anyway let's just grab some scraps here and see what we can do with them I have no idea what I'm doing here I'm just going to start somewhere and uh, see what I can do with it. And, it, you know, a lot of times you do like to uh, iron your, your pieces out. Normally I don't, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, doing that. Uh, it, sometimes it really helps. <clears throat> now, I've got this big piece here, and though I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but anyway, that's there. And the littler pieces I'm going to put over here to the side because I'm going to try to incorporate those somehow. Uh, so, let's try a gray piece. I'm going to leave the strings and things on because I never know how I'm going to use them and I do like to use them for texture. Okay, so we have that one on there and uh, we will cut a couple of, uh, of smaller ones, see if we can put them somewhere in one of our other ones. Do we just lay them to the side for right now? Okay, all right, let's uh, see what else I might have down in here. <clears throat> you can't see this, but I've got a bucket, a little bucket of scraps here. And so <laughs> I'm pulling out of the bucket.
Okay, we'll put that one there. And we have the little one over there, so we'll keep that. And then I have some of this, which looks good. And we'll put all that over there. Okay, we have a beginning of a landscape here. Let's get it in, pin it in. And remember that the first, uh, let's say, base layer of landscape fabrics that you put in does not mean that, that that's all you're going to do to shape and contour this landscape, because it's not. As you work out your landscapes, you will put other little pieces here and there that define it better. Let's take off the excess, because that really distorts what we're looking at. And, does, and doesn't help us to know what we need next. Also, when you're cutting these off, save decent little pieces because they can go into your next landscape uh, piece for coordinating. Of course, the little tiny ones you can forget, but It takes sometimes just the littlest pieces to incorporate something that, uh, to make it look like it's a set or a coordinated uh, ensemble of things. Okay, so we saved all those little pieces. There's our first little basic landscape. Okay, so let's work on our next one now. And you do not want to repeat every time the exact uh, things because then nothing changes and that that wouldn't be good. Uh, again, I'm digging, looking for, I need a, I'd like a darker fabric to start with up here. I don't think I have. Let's see. Let's start with this blue. Okay. And you don't have to stay, uh, if you're going to coordinate some fabrics, you don't have to stay particularly in the same color palette. Okay. You could, but you don't have to. Okay. We can take this one and put him up there like that. Angle him in. Take this small one. Angle it the other way. Okay, let's take some of this one. Put that one on there. the selvage showing and we don't want the edge showing there we go I'm liking that so I'm going to go ahead and pin that down so I can uh, work more freely without everything falling off Okay, you see we've got some of our fabrics worked in here. And before I pin that one, I have an idea here. Let me let me just play with this idea a little bit. As I put that there, and then come back with this one. Yes, I like that one. And then, where's that gray? No, I need a little darker. I think that would do one. All right, now we're going to work this one now. <coughs> 
Okay. And you see, because we've got some fabric repeat, we do look like um, a coordinated set already, even though we've got some totally different fabrics in there too. And like this piece, I don't quite have enough to finish the background, but that's okay because I'll finish that little detail off when I uh, get ready to work on that little landscape. Okay. Okay, let's clean it up. little pin heads uh, keep trying to cut through them they go to the edge okay we have another set here so now we have two that will coordinate only because we're pulling in some of the same fabrics our eye just thinks oh they go together okay even though we have big difference in here and a big difference in here let's try again something totally different uh, Let's try that, and now let's go with that, okay, let's let's go with this one. Let's try this one again. And we might, let's just take and put us a curve on that one. I think I like it better over here. Take just this little bit of one here. Let's put a little curve on it. Just so it looks a little more like a little gentle slope there. Okay. Now you notice this fabric I turned upside down. This one's right side up, this one's upside down, the, the print is, is fainter. Uh, you can do that too, and depending on what the backside looks like, in fact, I think I will change this one to do the same thing. We're using the same fabric, but going to the backside gives me a totally different look back here. And we'll get this one on here like this. Okay, now I'm liking that. Again, we've got a bold color change here, but we've got repeat fabrics. 
So that's pulling it together in our mind's eye and says this coordinates. Let me come down here. I've always tried to tell people to not forget the back side of their fabrics because I use both sides. I won't say equally, but I probably use the back side of fabrics uh, 25, 30% of the time, which you can imagine, really increases my fabric palette, my color palette, my shades and tones. Uh, so just by using the back side of things. And sometimes we just totally don't think about that. And we're just wasting uh, fabric or we go buy something that we think we need when we already had it on the back side of one of our other fabrics. Okay. Now these are colorful landscapes and when you when you do some uh, stitch work or you want to put some little tiny houses or some flowers or some trees or some mushrooms or whatever, you'll work in, in fun colors because these are colorful little they're not woodsy, they're not in the earth tones. So you would naturally have to, to use fabrics that, that uh, played well with this color palette. Yeah, got to learn to quit putting these pins all the way to the outside. I can't cut through pins. Try that again. Okay. Isn't this fun? With your, just your scraps, you can sit down and make a whole coordinated set of different things that uh, when you get time, you can work them out with your needlework and uh, put them on something as a set, coordinated set. Uh, you, if you have several gift items, you're going to make someone. Uh, let's say you're going to do uh, a decorated... Uh, tea towel, a bath hand towel. Well, each of these can go on there and they all play together. Now, here we go. One more. Let's see what we might want to do with that. Okay, we have a, let's go with this. Okay, this is a very light piece of fabric. I use that one there and let's see. to clean up with some of these that I already have uh, cut here. And just use them across there like that. We might see if this will tuck in back here. All right, and what? Where is, let's see, what to call it here? I need a little piece of 
Where is that? There it is. Now, what can we finish off with? Let me see. We have something different to use here in this compilation of fabrics. Let's try some of that. This little piece off. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull this heel over and tuck another little one under there. Okay. Again, different, but when your eye catches it, it looks like it's coming out of the same palette. Let's get some pieces pinned in here. So you can mass make these uh, landscapes using your scraps, whatever you have. And like I said, this is just little four by fours, but isn't that a fun little project to stitch when you're just traveling or out and about? It's small, you can carry wit with you with a couple of threads and colors and uh, just pull it out and, and stitch away and play with it. <clears throat> and also it's a wonderful way to use up those scraps that you have that you think you're never going to use. Uh, but there they are. They're playing together very well. Let's cut it down. And I hope I didn't do my pins bad this time. Oops, I did it, I did it again. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I must be a slow learner. That's all I gotta say. Let's look at the pins on the other side before I try that. Okay, those look like they might work. This trimming is not exact. Uh, just, just you're just trying to get it a cleaned up edge, so that you can uh, judge your piece better. And again, remember that this is only the beginning. This is the background layer of this um, little landscapes. Uh, I'm going to continue this uh, little series, so that you can see what you can do with these little landscapes as you finish them out at least i think i am if i don't i won't promise that because i've got a major challenge going on this next year and i do have a lot of work to do on that and so i don't know okay so what do you think these are our little coordinated fabrics our little landscapes that uh, we could put on the same project because they play together in color and pattern. Okay, so next time you have some fabric scraps and you want to play with some landscapes, well, just make very simple, basic landscapes because you can always complicate them or add more pieces to it. Uh, like for instance, if I want to add, you know, another ridge in here, or I want to put some, um, you know, I want to I want to lay out some grassy yarn and stuff along the whatever it is that you want to do, you can do when you get ready to stitch the, these pieces. But meanwhile, they are down and ready to go. Now, what I like to do with my landscapes is I like to machine sew the base. I like to take my machine and machine sew the base down. 
all my embellishment or add to I like to do in slow stitch. But I I found over the years if I take the time to uh, machine stitch it, everything is there. I can put it on a shelf. I can grab it anytime. I can grab it five years from today and it's ready to go, whatever. But uh, you can also take the time to slow stitch it. But machine stitching it is way faster. And that, that lets me to get to the slow stitching that I really like to do. And uh, also, sometimes I'll have a set or something made and I, I really don't have any embellishment items in mind or the color that I want to use or whatever. So I put them on a shelf and I wait and sooner or later I'm going to get the embellishments because I'm always collecting. That would make awesome uh, additions to these little landscapes. Okay, But for now, that's our mass making landscapes out of our scraps and I hope you enjoyed that and that you'll be working with your set of scraps. Till I see you next time, stay scrap happy. Bye-bye.